So behind me is the fertility temple at Lake Titicaca, just on the edge, very near to the Tepecala Hotel. It's got these mushroom shaped stones inside this polygonal megalithic enclosure. And no one's really sure whether these are phallic objects, symbols of fertility, or whether they could actually be magic mushrooms known to grow in this part of um, Peru. So there's a debate as to what this is really, you know, what it represents, but whatever it does, it's a fascinating sight and there's evidence even that there were chulpas here. Round towers, similar to what we find at Silistani and Katimbo. And so the lake probably would have come right up to this temple and it would have been right on the edge of the lake, like we find with other chulpa sites in the area. And you can even see signs of um, the curved rock here. So it does suggest indeed this could have been a chulpa site. There's evidence though that out there, there were circular chulpa towers that got taken apart. Um, yeah. So yeah. The, the lake could over have, in that that over in that corner of the compound. So this could have cut, the lake could have come right up to here. Do you think? <coughs> um, the lake was higher by a hundred feet ten thousand years ago, right. and that's when it lapped up right at, right at. That's why the entrance, one of the main entrance to Puma Punku is facing the lake. So ten thousand years ago, the lake was right at where the staircase is. Gotcha. And the, you, you should really read the work by J. M. Allen because it's very, you know so-called Atlantis in the Andes. But it's uh, it's quite in quite interesting because also th what the whole area here did so at some point in time is that the whole land mass tilted because the si Lake Titicaca was ten times the size it is now. It's huge. It went all the way down to where the salt flats are, which is hundreds of kilometers. And the salt of the salt flats is because this was seawater. So as it tilted, all the seawater came down and was deposited there. And as the as the rains continued and continued, then the seawater got diluted. There are freshwater sharks in the lake that, that are about that big, supposedly, and seahorses. So the seahorses obviously came from the ocean at some point. But whether the uplifting happened, some say it happened 10,000 years ago, which I find very difficult to believe, but it, it did happen. It was, you know, it was thrust up and a chunk of the Pacific was taken with it. So I'm just walking through some stones here at the Fertility Temple. And you can see uh, that many of these stones look like they're curved. They look like some of the stone. Um, they look like some of the stones that are found around Silistani and Katimbo, suggesting indeed there were chulpa towers here. So I find that fascinating. I wonder if there was many more around the lake. They've actually now been lost. I mean, the big. Uh, I mean, the last time we had a major ca uh, catastrophe was in you know, again 9,703 BC, and the geological record is pretty clear on that. Uh, I mean, it, the entire planet was covered with soot that was so deep that it's that thick in the uh, ice core samples. I mean, it's not just like a little volcanic eruption. We're talking about months of a nuclear winter where uh, the Maya said that you couldn't differentiate the people from the soil because they're getting covered with mud mm -hmm. from the sky. Uh, and uh, they took about seven burning suns colliding with the earth and you had the same story uh, all around the, uh, the world in different shapes and forms. Uh, but if those uh, broken up fragments of a comet hit exactly and strategically at the right places, you know, for example, shallow uh, areas around the coastal um, tectonic plates, that would have been enough to send the, uh, the debris flying through the atmosphere but also create normal, enormous tsunamis. Uh, so that was, as I was saying, they found uh, uh, the remains of people, uh, human beings, jumbled up with whales, uh, dolphins, creatures that went extinct around the end of the Ice Age, all huddled together on top of mountains in Vermont. Uh, which means the only way you can put a whale on top of a mountain is for it to be either fossilized there, because the mountain at one point was at sea level, but if you've got humans mixed in with saber-toothed cats and mammoths at the same time, something had to come and literally whisk them all up there. And it's the same in the south of France, uh, 150 miles inland, uh, I want to say 3,000 feet altitude. Uh, they're all dumped up there as well. So something very big here is, and that would be enough to send the, the Andes, which is a very um, 
well, volatile area to say the least, to tilt in a certain fashion that would have emptied the lake above Lake Titicaca onto Lake Titicaca and that just had another effect that went downhill and you'll see it tomorrow at uh, Pumapunku. The stones are everywhere. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that just washed right through. And they've got the remains of uh, uh, unusual animals which became extinct again at the time of the Ice Age, mixed in with human bones. Uh, and. Uh, and that's what the whole uh, um, contest with the uh, the dating method of Titicaca is all about, Tiwanaku is all about, uh, because the original uh, dating of the layer was they only went into a virgin layer of soil for the carbon-14 dating, because they couldn't accept that people would have been living here any any earlier. So they said, well, we only get down about three feet, and that should that's fine. Yeah, but the sediment is about 25 feet, and when you get down there, you start finding all kinds of interesting things, and uh, and they found the pottery, and they found. Uh, human remains uh, going back at least 8,000 years and that doesn't get, get accepted because you know against that European mentality that it could possibly have been anyone up here that early mm. so it's, it's the same story Yeah.